plug her in. Oh, yes. I've got a ton of new parts in for the ZR2, starting with all of the headlight parts. This has been killing me because I've been dying to open this. This is all the goodies from the retrofit source. I haven't opened it yet. Ah, there's so many parts in here. So many parts. So here's the ensemble of parts for the headlight build. It should be 99% of everything I need. I have to look it over and make sure I'm not missing anything. Now let's do some more unboxing. We'll start with these. These are gonna be my new high beams. The Morimoto Mini H8. So these are a complete LED projector. These are only for high beam, not for low beam. Pretty easy install. Let's open up the shrouds. Mini something shrouds. That looks pretty legit. All right, I like that. These are, you probably guessed it, the kit design for the Colorados. These are the uh, 4TLR by Xenon, our direct swap for the Colorados. Awesome, now these don't get a shroud. These are basically to be built in around the shroud that's already in the Colorado headlight. We have the D2S bulbs. These are pretty just simple D2S bulb. Nothing too fancy about that. Morimoto. Bluetooth, color control module here. The relay harness kit, HD relay, I might as well pull that out a while. It's legit quality. OEM input, power ground, simple. And then I got two sets of splitters, and then I have the relay harness capacitor link. The way I don't get any error codes or anything. I'm, I got two sets of the halo installation wire. I got one that's silver, one that's black. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use, but I have them. So we have four sets of the profile prisms. Oh boy, this is gonna be a lot of wiring. So now that you guys can see, holy crap, a lot of parts. A lot of parts have to go in these headlights. I'm gonna rewind a bit till I have longer hair and no facial hair and revert to the video footage I took like a month ago of taking the headlights apart. They are fully disassembled, ready for paint. Well guys, I'm doing it again, except this time I have a little more knowledge because it's the second set of headlights that I've built, or at least torn apart and modified. So these are my stock ZR2 headlights. The ZR2s come with the nicer lights with the, the projector housings. Even though the projectors aren't that nice, but it's better than like the base model Colorados that have just, you know, halogen low and high beam. High beam's still halogen though. Tonight, I'm going to get these things taken apart, hopefully without damaging them. If I do damage them, then this video will never exist because I just won't make it and I'll give up. As you guys know, or at least some of you who have watched before, uh, I put aftermarket headlights in the ZR2. They look good. I'm happy with them. Um, the light output is, is okay. I got LED bulbs in there. It's, they're decent. The beam pattern leaves much to be desired, but they look nice. But since I built a set of headlights for my big truck, the LB7, it gave me a little bit of knowledge on how to do this. And now I want to tackle it with a different set of lights. The plan is to get rid of some of the chrome in here. I don't think I'm gonna do color matching. I don't think that would fit with the ZR2. The ZR2 is an off-road truck. It has a lot of black. So a lot of this stuff inside is gonna turn black. I'm gonna take these apart. I got the oven on and preheated. Hopefully I don't melt anything. I don't know if I get replacement parts. So let's start by taking off all the stuff I need to take off before they go in the oven. So I noticed there is a little like rubber weather stripping piece up here. It seems to just unclip. There might be a little bit of glue on it like down here. And then on the back, I got one dust cover off. Take the other dust cover off. Pull the IB bomb out. And also in here, I installed the uh, Diode Dynamics switchback bulbs. Take that out. I think that's all. Stop. I also learned a new trick. Put wet paper towels and wet cardboard underneath it to protect it. Seems like a good idea.
starting to wonder if cutting these open would be the better idea. I'll give this the old college try. I've never cut apart headlights. This is the only method I've used. So I'm a little wary of doing something I haven't ever done before. Set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. There it is, folks. Well, almost. There is that. I see a screw. I see a couple screws, so hopefully everything in here screwed on and not uh, not glued. Uh, one done. Let's get the other one done. This one was significantly more difficult than the first one. I don't know if it's because the excitement wore off or like if I was just over it or the fact that it's 2 a.m. I don't know, this one took forever, still warm. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unscrew all this stuff, including that projector, just so it's all taken apart. We can see what we have to work with here. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the disassembly. This is everything that's inside of this light. But I, I got them open, nothing's broken. As far as tonight, that's it. Disassembly is finished, which is usually like the biggest pain. Glad that's all done. Next up, I gotta do some painting. Now I'm not being a perfectionist about this. This is just so I don't get primer and stuff all over everything else. Not that you'd see it anyway, but still, peace of mind. I forgot that I actually purchased these and I'm actually very surprised that anyone even makes them. Let's see how many packing peanuts we can spill. Why do you need this giant box for this? So ladies and gentlemen, these are all the parts I have to get in that headlight. This is the factory shroud for the low beam and this is the turn signal cover. And then I have the original cover that goes inside that no longer has any chrome if you notice. And then in here, you can see that is no longer chrome either because I don't need the reflecting part. That's going to be the high beam projector. So, so far what I did, I took the shrouds that I bought here. You can see they're painted sort of like a gunmetal color. The actual color they are is right here. It's a GM color, storm gray metallic. So I wanted an accent color, not just have everything completely dark and black. So this is gray. The factory shroud is gray and the original turn signal is gray. What I wanted to do and what I did do with the turn signal is that wasn't gonna function, it was just gonna be there because the halos are gonna be now, the, are now gonna be the turn signals. What I did was I smoked, because they were, they were too bright 
just having those lenses clear. So I smoked them and they looked terrible. Like the smoking wasn't even, it just, it was out of a spray can, you know. The VHT nightshades did not work out at all. So I stripped that off and then of course once I did that, the lenses were no longer clear and I didn't feel like polishing them just to attempt to tint them again. So I figured why not add another accent piece to tie everything in together and that's not gonna function anyway. So I just painted it. I painted it the storm gray and I think it's gonna match in well. The OEM shroud here sanded that down, primed it and painted it black. Now everything that I painted, I actually used a spray adhesive on it beforehand because all these parts are plastic and chrome and plastic chrome. So I wanted the paint to really adhere and that seemed to work. I didn't have any problems with the paint not sticking anywhere. I gotta drill one more hole and we'll start installation. That's the hole for the angel eye. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning in here and then get to working on putting the shroud in, making sure everything is good to go before we put it in the oven and put the lens back on. Now we get to have a look and see how this bezel looks all together with the accent pieces that are in there. I think it's gonna look great. I think the colors look really, really good together. Oh yeah, super happy with that color combo. Much nicer than just all black in my opinion. There it is on there, just that extra piece in there. A little bit of gunmetal just really ties it all together. I love this color combo look. I think this turned out nice. Kind of just a random piece now because these are both, in fact, turn signals. Check this out, guys. So here's the new reflector. Obviously different side, but much, much cleaner look. This should just about finish up this entire side. It's actually a pretty good match with that. That looks really nice. That's cleaned up. I need to clean this up real quick. Clean up the lens. We should be ready to uh, put it in the oven and mess it up and watch me scream and throw this thing out the window. And of course I have to test it before I put it in because I wouldn't want to have it all sealed up and then find out that nothing works. So we'll start up first with the angel eyes. I have them all connected here to the Bluetooth controller. Right. Plug her in. Oh yes, there they are in the pure white function. Scroll through the app here, see what we can do. Ah, there it is. Oh, that's freaking sick. That is so freaking awesome. Let's uh, make sure the turn signal function works. Oh, they just might have to be amber all the time because that's freaking sick color. So you hit the turn signal, right? And then you make your turn, and then it returns to the color that it, it was on. And we can do all sorts of colors. I'm so glad I went with the ones I can change the color. I mean, 99% of the time, they're just going to be white or just amber. I'm not going to mess with the color at all, but it's pretty cool to mess with it. Now, I also want to test out this high beam quick, because that I can't take out once it's not working. Don't need to test the HID, because that's just a simple ball you can change after the fact. Aha! There it is, and it is aimed correctly you see that man that is a concentrated beam of light that's for sure that is awesome everything works now there's still some butyl in there probably enough where I don't need to add any but I want to add just a very thin layer all the way around a fresh butyl just to be safe I'm gonna do that basically just by taking this and just stretching it out a whole bunch so it's super thin just adding a little bit not a whole lot Now I've got the oven preheated. I'm doing a little bit lower of a temperature. A lot of people suggest like 275. I'm gonna do 250. Just cause these are, these are, it's 
ready. These are delicate parts and I put a lot of time and a lot of money into it. I just want to be extra safe. Now what I'm also going to do, I'm going to use the heat gun and just heat up the remaining butyl that is around the factory lens. Back in the oven for five more minutes while it's together and clamped. Once that's done, I'll set it up here, leave it clamped, maybe add some more, and then just let it sit for probably 20, 30 minutes. It'll be done. I'm very happy that it all, it's all fitting together very, very well, as long as it seals. Stop. Got them both done, both out of the oven, all sealed up, turned out even better than I expected. I didn't think they'd look this good. It all came together just about perfectly. The, the paint, the paint work, like the black spray paint, that didn't turn out perfect. You can see a couple flaws here and there, but overall it looks very, very good. I love the accent color I did and all that. So let's take a closer look. There's the driver's side, the passenger side. Some fingerprints and stuff on there, don't worry about that. So you can see the switchback halos are tucked in nicely behind the shroud, you can actually barely see the low beam. You just see kind of the outskirts of it. The high beam, you see a little more, but not too much. I didn't want the halos to be like super obvious and you can see them and it just looks like some cheap eBay Honda Civic. So next, let me show you guys the back and kind of the wiring that I did. Not completely done yet. Still have all the relays to do, the wiring for the halos, and it's just, there's a lot of wiring left to go. But as far as the underside of the headlights, that's pretty much done. Dust caps fitted on there nicely. No issues with those at all. I still have my resistors on here from when I had the switch back. I'm gonna leave the resistor there because I probably need it with the halos. And then over here, these are both the feeds for the low and high beam halos, the switch back halos. I ran them on one side through one grommet, a little cleaner and easier to, to deal with. This, no holes in this at all. This is just, I, I only want to drill holes in one of these. And of course I could have put them like on the side or something, but I'd rather drill holes in something that's easily replaceable rather than something that I can't fix after the fact. Low beam HID wiring comes out the same type of grommet right out of here as well. And that'll feed to a ballast, which I think, more parts are here. I think I'm gonna do based on another guy that I saw, he actually put the ballast right underneath here. There's plenty of room down here for the ballast. It, and it is about that size. The wiring would just run right up here to that. That should be pretty simple. That's all for this video. Actually, I wanted to get the whole headlight build done in one video rather than a couple. I didn't go over every step exactly. This isn't a how-to. This is kind of a, I'm just winging it and bringing you guys along for the ride. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll I try to get back to every comment and I'll try to help you guys out if you want to build a set for yourself. It's not that difficult. A little more difficult than the set I did for the LB7. And these are, this is, I put a lot more money into these. The LB7, I didn't do any projectors or any kind of retrofitting. I just did the, uh, like the half halo rings and color matching. This is a lot more involved. This is an expensive build. If you want to do this for yourself and you already had the headlights, you're looking at probably, probably around $700 total and a lot of time. I probably have, uh, I don't know, 10 to 12 hours into building these. It's not the hardest thing to do, but it takes a lot of time. So thanks for watching guys. Next video on the headlights will be the installation and all of the wiring that I've set up in the truck. And of course, taking the bumper off and all that fun stuff again. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.